Today's newest vehicles feature more and more electronics that are integrated as part of the factory audio system. Many times we will see climate controls or navigation or other vehicle systems integrated into the stock radio. What that means for those of us that love car audio is we can no longer simply replace the factory radio in order to have a signal for our aftermarket amplifiers. In order to add aftermarket amplifiers, we now have to integrate into the stock system to use it for signal. Now what if the vehicle's stock audio system also includes a stock premium amplifier? Odds are the channels on this amplifier will be bandwidth limited. How can we solve that issue? Well, not to worry because Audio Control has a solution with the LC7i 6 channel line output converter. I'm Mark from the YouTube channel Car Audio Fabrication and I'm here today on behalf of Audio Control to show you the LC7i and how it can be used for your aftermarket car audio system. Let's take a look. Here's the packaging of the LC7i. Inside we will have the instruction manual, the quality control paperwork, and of course the LC7i itself. So in order to demonstrate the installation and the capabilities of the LC7i, I'm going to be using this test setup. What this test setup is, is this is a factory radio and a factory amplifier outside of a vehicle. These are being powered with a car battery, so this setup is basically a stock sound system outside of the vehicle so that we can show how we can use the LC7i to add aftermarket amplifiers. Now what's unique about this test setup is this is what's considered a premium factory audio system. This amplifier actually has eight different channels, and some of these channels are what's called bandwidth limited. What bandwidth limited means is right now I have an RTA connected to the outputs for the tweeter output from this amplifier. We know that a tweeter only plays the high range of frequencies, and as you can see here on the RTA, we only have highs coming out of this amplifier. If we switch the leads here to the next channel, you can see on this channel we have all of the mid-range frequencies. Now finally, if we go to the last channel here, this is actually the subwoofer channel, and you can see that all we have is the subwoofer range frequencies. Now there's a problem with this if you were to use a standard line output converter. The problem here is that you can't tap into any of those channels all by themselves in order to feed an aftermarket amplifier that you want a full range signal from. The LC7i solves that problem because it allows us to do what's called summing on the input channels. This is something that I wanted to explain and get out of the way before we run through the installation procedure just so you guys can see the problem that we're solving. So let's talk about installing the LC7i. One of the best locations to mount the LC7i is as close to the amplifiers as possible. First, we're going to make our power connections by disconnecting this plug. So I've connected a ground as well as a 12 volt constant lead. Now you could also connect a remote in, which is a switched 12 volt lead, but in this case, I'm gonna show you guys a feature of the LC7i, so I'm not gonna be connecting it. Next, we're going to connect all of the inputs to our speaker wires within the vehicle. So these could be coming from the factory head unit or from the factory amplifier. Now keep in mind, these inputs are rated at high power, so they can actually accept up to 400 watts of input power from the factory amplifier. So now I've made all of my speaker wire connections. These are channels one and two, which are powered on the tweeter channels. These are channels three and four, which are mid-range. And then finally, we have the subwoofer output. Now keep in mind, your vehicle doesn't have to have a factory amplifier to use the LC7i. You could also use a factory head unit. The next connections we're gonna make are to our amplifiers, and we're gonna use RCA style connections. Now it's important that we pay attention to which outputs we're actually using for our amplifiers. I'll explain this in more detail in a minute once we start talking about summing. The final connection we can make here is to the optional sold separately ACR1. If we are using the LC7i to add a subwoofer, the ACR1 serves really well as being a subwoofer volume control. We'll plug in one end to the back side of the controller itself, and the other end will go into the LC7i. 
Now, if you remember earlier, I mentioned that I wasn't going to connect the remote in. Normally, you would need the remote in to tell the device to turn on. The LC7i has a technology built in that allows us to not have to worry about running a 12 volt switched lead. It has what's called GTO, which stands for Great Turn On. If you watch over here on the RTA, right now the LC7i is off, but once I turn on my factory radio, you can see now we have output. What the LC7i is doing is it's actually detecting that there's signal coming in on the speaker inputs so it tells the device to turn on. Something else that's really nice about the GTO feature is it allows us to have a remote out. So since we're going to be installing aftermarket amplifiers, we can now use the LC7i as a remote out to those amplifiers to tell them to turn on. Another one of the LC7i's most powerful features is its input summing capabilities. If you remember from earlier, these channels right here are only the high range frequencies. These channels here, the purple, are our mid range frequencies. And then these channels here are the subwoofer range frequencies. So all of the different speaker connections are feeding the LC7i with different bandwidths of information. But as you can see, I currently have the LC7i set up so that these channels are all connected together on our main output channel. So now if we connect the main output channel to the RTA, you can see that we have a complete full range signal. You wanna make sure that you have a full range signal to work with for our new aftermarket speakers that we're installing and connecting to our new aftermarket amplifiers. Now additionally, since we have the option to connect to these other outputs, you will remember that this channel is what has the subwoofer range frequencies. So we could use our main outputs for our high mid ranges and woofers for our aftermarket amplifier, and we could use these outputs for our subwoofer amplifier. The LC7i also has multiple different adjustments here on the top of the device. As you can see, these first three allow us to control the output level for that particular channel. And what else is unique about the LC7i is it has this maximized LED light. As we turn up the output level, you can see where we get to a point where that light starts to flash that we've maximized the output signal. What's really important to understand about the LC7i is it's an active line output converter. So since we are boosting the voltage of the signal that is coming out of this device, it makes it so that we don't have to turn up the gain as high on our amplifiers. When you can run the gain lower on your amplifiers, what that means is you'll have less system noise and you'll just have a much cleaner output. Now the device also has AccuBase built in. A lot of times with a factory sound system, what the manufacturer of the vehicles will do is they'll make it so that as you turn up the volume knob, the bass will actually decrease. And the reason they do that is they're trying to protect their cheap stock speakers. But obviously if we're installing new speakers into the vehicle, they can handle these new levels of bass. So we don't want to lose the bass. What we can actually do is we can turn up our stock radio to the point that we actually hear the bass start to drop off and we can then adjust the threshold level. Once the threshold level is set, we can then adjust the actual level of bass that is added back in by the AccuBase circuit. So when we go to adjust this, this is definitely something that you would be able to hear within the vehicle itself. You don't have to have an RTA, but this is just really good for visual purposes. You can see right now our low end bass is suffering. And as we turn up the AccuBase level, you can see that it restores that bass. Now again, when it comes to the subwoofer level, keep in mind that via the optional ACR1, if we turn this down here, you can see over on the RTA, the bass level has reduced, so we can use this for our independent bass volume control. Now inside the device, there are a few advanced features that we can actually control. Keep in mind that any adjustments to any of these jumpers should only be made when the device is powered off. The first are these two jumpers. Right now I have them in the summed position because I wanted everything to sum to the main channel. But let's say that for some reason you didn't want to sum the subwoofer range frequencies into the main channel, you could move this jumper to separate. 
The same goes for this jumper. Now if you do happen to have alternator noise or any sort of system noise, you have the ground isolation jumper that you can adjust here. The next adjustment jumper is here and it is for auto mode. Auto mode allows the channel three outputs to have a signal if there was no input signal here. Finally, there is a jumper here for the GTO technology. If you wanted to defeat the GTO technology so that this device doesn't turn on when it detects a signal on the inputs, you could do so by moving that jumper. So next time you wanna install an audio system into a vehicle that features a stock radio that cannot simply be replaced or a stock amplifier, be sure to consider Audio Control's LC7i six channel line output converter. Audio Control also has many other solutions that you can use to integrate into a stock car audio system. If you would like to see what else Audio Control has to offer, or if you would like to purchase or learn more about the LC7i, be sure to check out the links down in the video description. Also, for more Audio Control videos, be sure to check out the rest of the videos here on this channel. Thank you for watching.